grass. She's a little windy right now, but we're still spraying. I've got this thing revved wide open, so that way you can kind of have a feel for the sound. about this whole AIM Hawkeye cap stand. I like to be able to slow right down and still hold right. I'm gonna do some shifting with this thing. So I'm gonna idle back. Actually, I'll show you what it can do in lug mode here. It will slow right down. We're still got right. So right down. Still holding 10. So this is about as slow as you need to go. And it's still holding. And then all I gotta do is just push it. There, now it's having trouble holding right. Just keep pushing it. So it still kinda acts like a hydro. Oh, there we go. Now we're going. Little jerk here though. Obviously it still shifts. And then if I shift it. Still a power shift. Okay. Watch me lift up my boom. Okay. Then I'll, I'm gonna turn and you can watch it drop. Auto steer just engaged. Double tap on it. Watch that thing drop, eh? Engage my product switch. I'm in second, let's shift up. All right, you guys pretty much got it figured. A little rougher. in the applied area here. That's why that uh, section isn't spraying. Spraying about 24 inches off the ground. I'm not going very fast here because the, the wind is going this direction. Actually, it's kind of going this direction. I'm trying to keep good control of it so that way it uh, doesn't smell too much or drift to make sure it doesn't get over to the guy's neighbor's field over there. That's what I'm trying to say. Holy crap, Mike. The wind isn't always your enemy, you can work with it. You just gotta know exactly which direction it is at any given second. And approximately how fast it's going. 
Right now, it's probably gusting 30K. So we spray low, and we spray slow. All right, I won't, st I'm gonna stop boring you. I'll lift it up. I'm gonna drop it back down. Drops really fast. Really impressed with this XDR uh, on a boom. The Apache's got a few rattles, I think. But, uh, yeah. We're just moving down the road here. We got a load on. As you can see, uh, visibility is dangerously bad when you have your boobs in. Especially when you come to an intersection. But you got good visibility when they're out. definitely cannot see good enough ahead of you for this speed going down the road. <laughs> well, we uh, lifted the booms up to about 42 inches, I do believe. The wind died down, so we're just uh, spraying away. We're in some pretty rolly ground here, so we're, uh, we're actually not going very fast. Anywhere between 10 and 14 miles an hour. Um, right here, the visibility isn't super good. That railing the light reflects up that railing, like I said before in the previous video. The lights could show farther out. I'd like to see a little farther out there. Need a light bar, I think. And lights in my little buttons. So uh, speaking of hills, I actually had to stop because uh, this field is uh, very difficult to do at night. Um, so anyway, I came out with a load and being that this is two wheel drive, and it's not a front wheel assist and the tires are a little smaller and it has a 70-30 weight displacement, 70 obviously being on the back, 30 being on the front. Uh, the wheels kind of like to skid a little bit. You can't, you got to be careful how fast you turn. If you turn too fast, they're gonna, they want to skid and then you start tearing up the crop down there. Also, when I was going down the hill, I thought turning would be a problem. Actually, turning wasn't really a problem going down the hill. There was enough weight on the front end. But it's when I turned around and started turning, going up the hill, well then there's hardly any weight on these wheels and then they were just easily skidding trying to get turned uh, on the side hills so uh, that can be a challenge so uh, that's one thing I noticed when I got in these hills with a full load on so I, I just thought I would share that with you guys okay alright guys so uh, as you know I was uh, running this sprayer till uh, wee hours the morning last night I think, it's, I think the monitor showed like 2.58 a.m. or something. And then I did a little bit of a review on it because that was going to be about my last load with this particular unit. And I rewatched that again this morning. And uh, it was like, I was watching it and I was like, ooh, boy, Mike, I, I think you should probably get some sleep. So, uh, so anyway, I thought I would kind of just redo it. And I don't think I'm really any better because I don't think I really got that much sleep because we were up early again uh, doing more spraying. But uh, I just wanted to point out a few things. I don't like doing any tor any t types of reviews on stuff unless I can put a significant amount of hours on it. Like I'm talking 100 and some hours. That way you can properly get worked into the unit 
and really get a feel for it. Now I did do about a half a dozen loads, so I kind of have a, a light feel for it. It took me about five of those loads just to get muscle memory into the joystick. So, and I'm not going to tear anything apart. The Apache sprayer um, actually surprised us. It surprised us all. Uh, Brian ran it and also Jared ran it. And we all kind of came up with a similar consensus. Um, Brian said that it was rougher and uh, it, it wanted to push skid and, uh, and it was surprisingly quiet. Um, Jared basically said the same thing. It was surprisingly quiet and uh, it was noticeably rougher. Also, Jared almost got it stuck, in which he almost had a heart attack because he is tied with Terry and Ashton in the stuck list, both tied at three, three stucks apiece. And he almost went to the most stucks because of that Apache, and that would have instantly made him really dislike that Apache. So luckily, he did not get stuck. Um, so just a couple quick things here about the Apache. I'm not going to take up much of your time. Um, really like the Raven. Viper 4 Plus in there. I really like the XTR, the new XTR Auto Boom. It was really responsive. It was really quick. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the Raven uh, Viper 4, so uh, maybe I have a bit of a bias to that. Okay. Um, actually, but regarding the whole unit itself, um, I didn't really like these lights. Um, they did not give enough light at night. You couldn't see there. Those are all floodlights up there. Um, you, you'd pretty much have to put a light bar up at the top. It, it is all LED lights. Uh, the side view is okay, as you'll see in the videos. I don't like climbing underneath that boom. I, I, I put out six tanks, six tanks, and six times I hit my head on that boom. You'd think I would learn after a while, but apparently not. Um, basically, the biggest pro, or sorry, the biggest con to this unit is it's only two-wheel drive. Now, I was told you can only get them in two-wheel drive. Uh, so, but this particular unit is most definitely in a two-wheel drive, and that it has a 70/30 weight displacement, so 70% is sitting on those back tires. So you're very prone to getting stuck when you don't have that front wheel assist. And uh, so that's probably one of the biggest pros, or I got pros stuck in my head, I guess. That's one of the biggest cons. It's only two-wheel drive. The second biggest con would be that um, that um, since it's only two-wheel drive, it kind of acts like a like a like the old Burt's down there. Uh, when you are climbing a hill and want to turn maybe too fast, it just starts pushing those front tires. Like it, you have to really slow down. And it just starts to push those front tires around. So then you can start tearing up some crop. So that that's not good either. Um, obviously, those booms are their uh, visibility when they're boomed up is dangerously bad. And uh, but otherwise, that's about it, you guys. It, it might not be quite as refined as maybe the John Deere and case sprayers, to be quite honest with you. But all in all, it's actually a very comfortable sprayer to run. Uh, you do have a power shift, six-speed transmission, so you kind of got to get used to the, the power shift. But the pro is that you have a power shift transmission, and you have unlimited amount of power. It's a 6.7-liter Cummins engine with like 285 or just under 300 horsepower or something like that. I think that's what they said. And it is snappy. Like with a full load, you can hit that thing in third gear and just crank it up, and it feels like you're you're catwalking up a hill. So um, it's got good power. That's a good pro. The cab, everyone said, is surprisingly quiet. It's quieter than my four-wheel drive tractors when I was seating. And uh, but it is rougher. And uh, I really do like those are Palmier booms. Palmier booms. I think I'm saying that right. Probably not. Uh, the booms are pretty good. Not only does the trip break away, but it also breaks away here. Don't ask me how I know that. And uh, <laughs> no, because it doesn't have the auto boom wheel. I'm always used to having that auto boom wheel where it can come down and hit that. Well, without that auto boom wheel, it wants to. You got to hit the boom. So I would definitely mount a wheel up there. That's kind of like your oh crap, I hit something. Not a fence post, but your boom hit ground. At least it hit the wheel and can roll on the ground versus slapping the ground. Um. It, the, the sprayer checks all the boxes. It, you have a really good rate controller. You got good mapping. You got good auto boom. Um, you got 1,200 gallon. You can get up to 132 foot booms on here. This is 120. Uh, you got you got great power. It checks all the boxes. It gets it done, and it's about two to three hundred thousand dollars cheaper than its nearest mainstream competitors. So that that speaks a lot. Like that speaks a lot. So that's one of the biggest pros again going for it is it's two to three hundred thousand dollars cheaper, and uh, the seat's comfortable. 
the joystick is comfortable. So yeah, it's actually, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed, guys. So I just want to let you guys know that. Thanks for following me around. I think we have a few other colors coming down here. I don't know how it compares for noise versus the John Deere. I haven't got a chance to get in that 4060. Uh, it's my brother's sprayer, and he has not gotten out. He has not released that steering wheel to anybody. So uh, one day, next year maybe, if nothing else. But anyway, thanks for following me around. And I will catch you guys on the flip side.